Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be going over the quotient rule. So now that we've already done some practice problems and we've gone over the product rule, we're going to go ahead and transition into the quotient rule. So let's go ahead and check it out. So here we have that quotient rule is used when two functions multiply or divide. So let's think back about the word quotient, right? So quotient is when you have two factors or two things in math dividing. So whenever we have um, two factors dividing, we're going to go ahead and use the quotient rule. So now we're actually going to use the, the product rule. We're going to refer back to the product rule to get to the quotient rule. And the more and the better that you learn your product rule, the easier it is to learn and remember your quotient rule. All right. So let's just go back to the product rule. And we have two functions multiplying f and g. We said that the derivative was the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So let's go ahead and say that one more time. It's going to be the derivative of the first, f of x, times the second, plus the derivative of the second times the first. So you just say that a little bit more time, and you guys will have it down packed along with the practice that we already did on the product rule. So now, the good thing is that when we shift now to the product rule, when we have two functions dividing here, f and g, right? Um, what's going to happen is that we're just going to rewrite the same, the, the top, the top of the quotient rule is going to be the same thing as our product rule, except for this one minor but very important detail where we have a plus for the product rule and we have a minus for the quotient rule. All right? It's going to be very important. And then the top of the quotient rule is going to go the same way as our product rule. It's going to go derivative of the first times the second minus derivative of the second times the first. So once again, the quotient rule breaks no, breaks not the same rule of the product rule in which you only are um, deriving one of the functions, f or g, and either side of the minus sign in this case, not the plus sign anymore, the minus sign, and um, the functions are different. You have f and g and f and g, right? And now the last addition to the quotient rule is going to be that you have the bottom squared or the g of x squared or the second function squared, whatever you want to call the g of x or the bottom or the second function. It's all the same thing. You're going to have the bottom squared, right? So I like to read. We're going to go ahead and go over how to do the quotient rule, how to say the quotient rule one more time. And it's going to be, we're going to start off actually with bottom squared, right? So it's going to be bottom squared. And then the top of the quotient rule is going to be derivative of the first times the second minus derivative of the second times the first. So let's go ahead and say that one more time. And that is going to be bottom squared. And on the top, we're going to have derivative of the first times the second minus derivative of the second times the first. And that's how we do the quotient rule. So now let's go ahead and apply an example on how to do this, right? So here in example one, I give you a very basic, very simple example of f of x of 2 over x, right? So here, you could solve this a different way because you guys already have your power rule skills. But we're going to go ahead and solve it through the quotient rule. And I'm going to solve it through the power rule skills just to show you guys that, the, that the, the quotient rule is equally as good. But the thing about the quotient rule is that we can deal with anything dividing. So you guys will see how let's start off with doing it the power rule method, which we start off by bringing the x up. So it'd be 2x to the negative 1, right? Because we can't deal with fractions yet. And then we're going to apply our power rule in which we multiply, we bring down this negative one. We bring down this negative one. So we're going to have negative two X to the negative two, which is going to give us negative two over X squared, right? So we just computed our derivative using the power rule method, right? But now we're going to shift and apply what we just learned, which is our um, quotient rule method, right? Which is going to let us do any kind of any kind of uh, derivative. So let's go ahead and transition to the product. I mean, to the quotient rule, in which we're going to have f of x is equal to two over x. And we're going to start off our we're going to start off our quotient rule by saying it out loud, right? And the way we do the quotient rule is that we have bottom squared so the bottom is x so x squared and now we're going to start on the top by having derivative of the first which in, in this case the first is the two so the derivative of two is just zero so the derivative of the first times the second which in this case the second is x right minus 
derivative of the second, which the derivative of x will be 1, times the first. And the first is 2. Very good. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So we're going to have that 0 and x are just going to cancel. Negative 1 times 2, or 1 times 2 is going to give you negative 2. This whole thing here just gives you negative 2. You can look at it two different ways. 1 times 2 gives you 2, and then you apply this negative that you have outside. So it still gives you negative 2. And the bottom is just x squared. So that actually didn't take us that long. It was I would say if we do it quickly, it's fairly about the same speed, maybe 2 seconds apart of anything. So here we have negative 2 over x squared. And then here we have negative 2 over x squared. So we have showed how the power rule method and the quotient rule method give you the same answer, which means that they're valid, right? Or two methods match, so we're good to go. But the thing about the power rule method is that it's limited. And let me show you why we need the quotient rule method, right? And we're going to go ahead and check out example 2, which you see you have x minus 1 over 2x minus 5. So let's say we would try to do this as a, as a, as a uh, power rule method we'll be given with the equation of f of x of 2 minus 1 of 2 minus x to the negative 1, right? So we would have to bring up this whole bottom up, and we have no idea how to do that yet, right? We can't distribute because we have a negative 1. So this negative 1 here is, just, is a problem because we can't apply our power rule on a thing like a 2x minus 5. It is just getting way too crazy right now. So since we don't have the skills to do this problem yet, you guys will eventually have other skills that are not just the quotient rule, but for right now we don't have those skills, we're restricted to using the quotient rule. And that's kind of the idea of all these little rules, right? Each rule is used for a specific, um, a specific scenario in which it is the fastest and most efficient way to get it, right? So depending on, all, you have all these this toolbox of all these rules, and the best one is the one you're going to use because it's going to be the fastest answer and you're going to be done with your problem right away. And they're all equally valid, which is a good thing, right? So let's go ahead and transition to our quotient rule. And we're going to start it off the same way. We're going to start off our quotient rule by having f prime of x, right? And we're going to have bottom squared, so 2 minus 5, 2x minus 5 squared, bottom squared. And now we're going to start up here with derivative of the first one or derivative of the top and that's going to be the derivative of x minus 1 which is 1 so derivative of the top times the second which is the bottom so it's the derivative of the bottom which is 2 I apologize not derivative just derivative of the first times the second so derivative of the top times the bottom right there's no you never take two derivatives in the same in the same um, side of the of the of the negative, right? Or of the positive, if you're doing product rule. So now we go ahead and derive the second, or we derive the bottom, which is just the root of 2x minus 5 is beast. It is 2. And we go ahead and take the derivative. We don't. We just leave the top, right? So the idea here is that we're never deriving two functions in the same side of the, of the minus or the plus. We are just using two different functions and we're only deriving one of them, right? So let's go ahead and say it out loud and make sure we have everything in place. Let's do a one, one little check before we say this is done. We have bottom squared, boom, 2x minus 5 squared, times derivative, and then now we go to the top, times derivative of the top, 1, times the bottom, 2x minus 5, minus derivative of the bottom, times the top. Perfect, right? So say that one more time. You guys are going to get a little tired of this, but it's just going to stick on. It's going to be much easier. We just have to remember all these rules, right? So let's go one more time through it. Bottom squared. Now we go to the top and we go derivative of the top times the bottom minus derivative of the bottom times the top. Okay? And just make sure that everything there is in place and we're good to go. Now, we would say that we're done and we're going to call it a date, but we're not because we still need to simplify, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let our derivatives compute correctly. Our calculus is done. We're done with our calculus. Now we're just going to work on our algebra. So here we're going to have 2x minus 5 squared. And then we're going to have to distribute this 1 to both sides here. So that's going to give us 2x minus 5. Good. And now we're going to do this in two parts. 
we're going to leave this minus here in the middle and now I'm going to distribute this to to both of these so I'm gonna get 2x minus 2 and now my last step is going to be to distribute this minus I'm going to distribute this minus onto both of these so I'm going to have 2x minus 5 2x minus 5 minus 2x plus 2 over 2x minus 5 squared. I'm going to combine like terms. So in this case, I'm going to have that this 2x and this minus 2x are going to cancel. And this minus 5 and this positive 2 are going to give me negative 3. That is correct. So I should put this answer right here. I'm going to get negative 3 over 2x minus 5 squared. And I'm done. I get negative 3 over 2x minus 5 squared. And I have used my product rule. I have checked it. I've said it a few times in my head. Boom. I simplified everything and I'm good. So let's move on to the next problem, right? So here in example 3, I chose it for a very specific reason, right? Because there's a problem whenever we're taking these derivatives that we're always going to run into and your professor just loves to do this, right? It's just like, God, can I put any more radicals in this? If I can put a radical inside of a radical, which they do, I would. And let's be prepared. And the only way to be prepared for all these radicals is just doing a bunch of examples on them, right? Just making sure that they can trick us. They're not going to be better than us in all this radical game. So let's go ahead and identify the radical problem, which is when we see a radical in our f of x. Before we're even deriving, we see a radical. It is the radical problem I'm going to be referring to because we cannot derive in, in, when we have radicals. We always need all of it to be exponents. Right? So let's go ahead and get rid of our radical problem here. And we're going to change our fraction to... It's going to be... See, radical x is equal to... x to the 1 half. And I know it's very commonly used because... radical x is always going to be used... and it's going to come up a lot and it's just always going to give you x to the one half so it's just going to come up so many times that you just be like boom radical x boom, no problem it's x to the one half done and now we're going to have x cubed minus 3x plus 1 okay now we're done with that we're going to go ahead and now we got rid of the radical problem we're going to go ahead and derive correct so to derive this problem we see that it has a fraction two things are being divided I'm gonna use my quotient right I have two two factors dividing I'm gonna go ahead and use my quotient rule later on it's gonna be a game of recognition of what to use right so I know in this, 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 this video we're going over just quotient rules so obviously you're gonna use the quotient rule right because we have a section on quotient rule but later on it's like okay I have things dividing it has to be the quotient rule I have things multiplying I can use the product rule it becomes what do I use right in the next video, we're going to talk about the chain rule, but we'll get there. Let's just talk about the quotient rule now. So let's go ahead and perform the quotient rule. And we're going to do it by starting off saying we do the bottom squared. So x cubed minus 3x plus 1 squared. Now we're going to go ahead and do derivative of the top which is one half, which is bring this exponent down, x to the negative one half. We subtract one, right? That's, a, that's also another very common derivative. x to the one half, the derivative is going to be one half x to the negative half, right? And we are going to multiply now by the bottom, which is x cubed minus 3x plus 1 minus a big fat minus because it is a quotient rule and quotient rule quotient rules use minus and then we're going to multiply it by the derivative of the bottom 3x squared minus 3x minus 3 3x squared minus 3 times just the top which is x to the one half okay so now we have computed our derivative. Now we're done with doing our quotient rule. We need to go ahead and play the algebra game, or we need to go ahead and simplify. The calculus here is done. You are done doing calculus. 
Now you're going to go back and do a bunch of algebra, which, like I said, it is the hard part of this chapter because the calculus is just remembering the rules that we're applying, but the simplification and all the little exponents and all the little stuff here and there, that's what makes the problem hard. And that's what we got to focus on. So, so with f of x, we recall that we look for the radical problem, right? So we have the radical problem, which we try to get rid of, right? So that's the f of x problem. Now, when it comes to, as we're here in green, to f prime of x, we have the negative exponent problem, and we also have the fraction problem. And what that means is that I don't like, when I have my f prime of x, I don't like seeing any negative exponents or any fraction exponents, right? So let's go ahead and look through our, our derivative and see if we have any of those problems. So here I have both. I have a negative and a fraction. And here I have a fraction. So I got to make sure that I need to get rid of those problems, right? So let's go one step at a time and rewrite our bottom squared. It's going to stay like it is. It's not going to change much, just bottom squared. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of that negative exponent. And how do we get rid of a negative exponent? Good, we bring it to the bottom. Our algebra skills are staying in touch because we're always using them. x cubed minus 3x plus 1 minus 3x squared minus 3 times x to the 1 half. So now I already got rid of the 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 negative exponent problem. So now I'm done with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to get rid of the fraction problem. And how do I get rid of fractions? I go from exponents and fractions to radicals, right? So let me go ahead and do that. So I'm going to just rewrite the bottom as x cubed minus 3x plus 1 squared. And then I'm going to go ahead and do two things here. I'm actually going to move this whole factor up here because they're multiplying. So then I'm going to have x cubed minus 3x plus 1 over 2 radical x, right? Because we recognize that x to the 1 half is always equal to radical x. x to the 1 half is equal to radical x. You're going to see that 100 times. So, and then here I'm just going to have 3x squared minus 3 times radical x. And we can say that we're done with this quotient rule. So now let's go ahead and do some practice problems on these quotient rules and how we can keep doing the algebra to make sure we can fit these answers into the most simplified form it can be in. So, see you guys next time.